hey you guys welcome back to my channel hey girl hey girl let's talk so you know um sorry i haven't posted in a while but honestly like i really want to do this story time because i was like you know what like i have a lot of story times and i really wanted to like talk to you guys about how how i ended up with an eating disorder because i feel like there's so many young girls out here that have eating eating disorders or have like um dysmorphia i just probably because like right now like instagram twitter tiktok all these like different snapchat like all these different like apps and stuff like that like i feel like we see all these women that are like perfect i look perfect i see that they have like that life and i think a lot of times like it can cause us to be um very like subconscious and very insecure about ourselves because i remember growing up like when i was younger like you know being like always being called like the fat kid or the ugly kid or little miss piggy or whatever so i want to talk to you guys about like how i be like how i end up with an eating disorder because i feel like it's a very important discuss uh, topic that we never really talk about and i don't know like i was just thinking about it today and i was like i feel like you know it's on my heart to speak to say and like i said i just want to help somebody so we're gonna get into it and i hope it's not too emotional well because i've really never talked to anybody about this but honestly like um, I think, but let's just get started. Okay, so I'm 24, born in 1998, July 10th. I'm a cancer, period, water sign. Period. It's us, bitches. Sorry. Let me not get, let me not get too carried away because, you know, I ride for my cancers and my water signs, okay? But, <laughs> but no, really. So I think, honestly, like, as a kid, you know, okay, we're, okay, when I was younger, I almost passed, I almost passed away. And um, I had a I had a disorder called like Kawasaki, whatever. If you guys want me to talk about that, we can in a different video because that story time is crazy. How like I knew I was probably gonna die type of thing, but we will talk about that later. So you know when I was younger, like I I blew up because they gave me a lot of steroids because they need to give me steroids so I wouldn't freaking die or whatever. So you know that happened, and you know so ever since then, like I've always been like a like I always knew that I probably would be like short and stubby because looking at my grandparent, looking at my granddad, looking at my mom, and looking at his mother and stuff like that. Like looking at my aunt Teresa, just looking at all these like different people. My granddad's side of the family, like I pretty much knew like I had like the short like stubby jeans. So like, but it's just like I always feel like I had like more of a stomach because I did get pumped with steroids when I was a kid. Like I, it's just whatever. So um. You know growing up i feel like i don't feel like i know i was always picked on by kids my age and adults in my family yes so you know growing up like i remember there was this one incident there was this one incident where i was walking we we're going to call this person dumbo <laughs> her name's dumbo bitch love her to death but her name's dumbo i was walking in kroger and um, mind you, I've always had really like thick thighs, like just really big legs. So when I was younger, like my legs, no lie to you, like my legs were just like, I had big fucking thighs. Like I never get this old, this this old country lady. She was like, what did she say? Well, she was she was describing my legs to somebody. She's like, you know, you lost you some weight. She, it was at church. She's like, you know, you lost you some weight or whatever. And I was like, oh, thank you. Like I'm like, you know, because I was getting older at the time, so like my baby fat was kind of like shedding off of me. And I remember, like, someone was like, oh, she still got some big legs. Like, she got some big legs. Like, she got some pretty legs. And I was always very subconscious about my legs, like, always. Like, even, like, to this day, like, I don't really like wearing shorts. And when I do, like, I be feeling like everyone's staring at me, like, real talk. Like, I be like. But I never forget she said that I had, um, my legs were so thick. They were, like, country time turn butter thick. <laughs> and I was like, what? And she was like, girl, you like, you like, you, you, you at old school country town, like country thing. That's why I, I knew why I said, yeah, she, she country for real. But that always stuck with me. Cause I was like, is that a compliment? And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I guess I can fuck with it. But neither here nor there, but just little things like that to where when I was younger, like people used to always like comment of like my legs, like, oh, like your legs are so thick. They're so whatever, big. But I never forget this one incident when I was younger. Um, I actually was in the store with Dumbo and I was walking in front of Dumbo, excuse me, and I was about to get the card. And she was like, why are you walking like that? And I was like, what do you mean like walking like that? Like, what do you mean? She's like, you're walking like weird, like you're, you're wobbling, like, you know, like you're a fat person. She's like, well, you are big, so you need to lose weight. And I was just like, what? 
imagine this is like a these are incidents that happen to me like on the regular so i was just like okay like all right and then i remember there was this one incident to where like it was hard for me to find pants that fit because like mind you like my weight when i was younger would go up and down so like if i was really stressed out i would blow up like bad and then when i wasn't stressed anymore my weight kind of like ease out in my weight and will go up and down because my family was toxic <laughs> okay but they never want to talk about that they just want to talk about oh like why are you no bitch y'all were toxic and it wasn't an environment for a child but okay that's neither here nor there so yeah so um she said that a couple times and then i remember there was this one time we were um at a restaurant you know i ordered some food or whatever i think i ordered like what did I, order? I think I ordered like chicken. It was something. It was like at one of these little old little country little restaurants. I can't even remember. And I ordered some food. And I remember she was like, oh, you don't need to eat that. And I was just like, what? I was like, well, this is what I want. And she's like, well, you don't need to eat that. Like, you know, like that, you know, you're, you're already fat. You're already too big. And like, you know, she used to just always make like comments about like my weight and stuff like that. And I remember, um, you know, just after a while, like when... And this is why I tell people, when you have kids and, like, or even if you have adults around your kids, you need to really be paying attention to what those adults are saying to your children. Because a lot of times, like, you can have these kids or you can have adults around your kids and you don't know what these adults are saying to your kids. And maybe your kids are probably afraid to tell you or that they're probably just, like, very, like, don't really want to start any drama. I just, they just think that, you know, like, maybe, like, this person should tell me that. I don't know. But it's like you really need to watch like who you have around your kids because I think when you have like hateful adults around your kids, it can cause a lot of problems. Yes. So Dumbo was always just very like rude to me. Like very, very rude. Always nitpicky. Like she'll call me nappy headed. I remember one time she called me ugly. I remember one time uh she like there was this there was a I have nothing against mixed people. But that was like this girl, and like she was biracial. And mind you, I'm I'm, I'm African American. I'm black. Both of my parents are black. Like you can see the hair that's growing out of my head. Like I'm not ashamed of it. But it took me a while to really like. If you guys want me to talk about that, let me know. But that was a while. Like it took me up until maybe like two or three years ago where I wouldn't talk about my hair without crying because I felt like my hair was so much under attack when I was a child to the point that where it really left a bad taste in my mouth. So, and that was another fragile like thing that I had. But going back to the eating disorder um yeah so you know like this person was just very like mean to me like very like you'd be like oh like you're basically basically just to sum it all up she would just be like you're fat you're fat you're fat you're fat you're fat, you're fat. like i'm fat like okay bitch i get it i'm obese i'm fat right so i remember i got to high school and mind you like I wasn't the only black girl, but, like, I was kind of, like, the only black girl who, like, hung around certain types of people. If that makes sense. If it sticks, it sticks. If you don't get it, Google it. I don't know. So, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just sleepy. So, you know, I get to, I get to middle school. Actually, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I get to high school, and it's, like, I finally meet, like, friends that, like, get me, right? But I remember, like, there was, it was this one time I was getting ready for school, and Dumbo was there, like, cause you know Dumbo was living with us at that point as well. If you guys want to start talking about that, let me know, Chair. I got a lot of stories, I got a lot of stories. But Dumbo was living with us at that time, and um, I was in ninth grade. I was getting ready for school, and like, I thought I looked cute. Like, I had these little skinny jeans on, I had a little crop top on, and like, it wasn't really a crop top, cause like, I still had a stomach, so like, it was like one of those little, like hollow like shirts, whatever. And then like, I had like my cute little sneakers and like whatever, whatever. And I remember she was just like, "Why are you wearing that?" Like you're not a size six like you're not you're not skinny like you don't look cute like you're fat and I'm just like okay all right oh you're still gonna wear that and I'm just like okay I guess I'll change whatever right so when that happened I remember I came to school and I was like crying like I was just like you know like everyone's always talking about me and saying that I'm fat and just saying that I'm ugly and saying I'm nappy headed and just saying all these little horrible things about me and I don't understand why like I'm talking to like my friend like I'm just venting right 
And she's like, girl, I could fix that. We could fix that today. Like, we can get you snatched. We can get you losing weight. Like, th that's no biggest. So I'm thinking, like, you know, like, we're going to go to the gym. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Like, since we have to go to the gym, like, what, what we got to do? Because, you know, she did have, like, she was pretty, like, thin. Like, she was thinner than me. And she was like, oh, girl, you don't even have to work out. Like, you don't have to be on a diet. Well, it is a diet, but don't even worry about it. Hindsight 2020, girl. There is no who and I'm talking to all the young girls out there. There is no easy way to lose weight and there is no easy way to success. Is it you get surgery? Look at Jackie O. Okay, like you see that you get surgery and you get botched up. And I'm not saying this for everybody, but this, this is the harsh reality. There is a give and take with everything. It says you get surgery, you go on a diet, you go to the gym. You take stuff like there's so many things that you can do, but at the same time, it's like it's a give and take with everything. And now that I'm older and I am on my fitness journey, and it's probably taking a little bit longer than other people, I'm realizing like the gym honestly is like the best way to go. Not because like oh like it's just healthier for you. I just feel like it's healthy. It's it for one, it is healthier for you. But for two, the reason why I like the reason why I like the gym is because I've been in that space of being like. Oh, like it's a quick and easy fix. Like, you know, like we ain't got to do much. Like, you know, I just don't have to eat for two weeks or I'm just going to th make myself throw up or, you know, just do like doing those things. And those things can really harm your body and it can throw off your throw off everything. Like it can throw off like like your ice, like literally like you can like just Google it. Like before you I know it's hard, and I know, like, a lot of times, too, when you, when you do come up with an eating disorder, it's kind of like a drug. It's kind of like something, like, you, you're, I feel like, because for me, depression and my eating disorder came hand to hand. So, like, I would be depressed and wouldn't eat, and I would see that I would look thinner, even though I felt horrible. And I felt like I was in, like, a, the gray sky. But I noticed that, like, you know, like, I felt like people loved me more when I, would, when I looked sick that makes sense so all i'm saying is do what you want to do but at the same time having an eating disorder it's nothing to be proud of it's not cute it's bad for you and maybe i can have somebody maybe i can like do like a little interview like so with someone who's in fitness we could really tell you like okay like this is why you shouldn't have an eating disorder because this is like my personal opinion but i just that's something that i just wouldn't like recommend for anybody so disclaimer over back to the story Bye, this friend she's like girl i got you like you know we're gonna lose like you're gonna lose the weight like period so i'm like i'm excited because i'm like oh like no one's gonna call me fat anymore like i'm already stressed out because of the stuff that's happening in my household anyway so me being depressed was like a given like i was depressed 18 years of my life growing up like i was depressed i was a fun i was a high functioning depression person because I just was so used to it so went over her house one day and um she was just like okay like this is what I do like well she's like you can either do two things you can either eat whatever you want and or you could drink a lot of water and eat like maybe a handful of this a handful of that this that and the third or you could do a little bit of both so you know at that time I was like girl what I'm like girl I'm not doing that like that's gross like and if anybody know me y'all know I don't like throwing up bitch like, <laughs> like I'm one of those type of people when I throw up baby I think I'm dying like I can't breathe <laughs> I can't breathe bitch so I be in there like this no like girl the whole nine like girl so when she said that I was like girl what like I'm not doing that right but then she was like I mean but like look like look like look at me then like when I was in eighth grade look at me now I'm wearing ninth grade like look like look girl like I'm doing it and you was already crying about like you don't want nobody to make you feel and you know like that's what I can't say about that person like she even though like you know she had issues oh gosh she had issues she I admire the fact that she would take life by even though we were in high school it's like she would take the bull by its horns you know what i mean so it's more of like uh she was very like okay if they gonna talk about you then you might as well do something about that. all right if you're gonna if they're gonna um or if they're gonna hate on you 
make, give them something to hate about. Like, our, if, if they feel like you stunned, stun harder. Like, she was one of those type of people. Like, she'd be like, oh, you think I stunned on you? Okay, I'm going to stun harder. How about that? Like, you, you thought my foot was on your neck? Now I'm going to glue it to your neck. Like, she was one of those type of people. And she, like, really, like, helped me with my confidence. Because I'd be like, oh, like, you know, like, because I'm one of the type of people where, like, I'm very, like, I try to be unproblematic. Like, no lie, I do. Like, I don't like when people be like, oh, like, you think you're better or... Um, or if I, or, or even like if if I feel like I offended you, I'm like, did I offend you? Like, girl, I will apologize. Like, I'll be like, oh my god, like I'm so sorry. Like, and I will like write you like a whole paragraph. And I'm like, I'm so sorry because I really don't be wanting to like hurt people's feelings. Like, I really don't want to be like that mean girl because I know how it feels to like have like that mean girl come to you and you just be like, well, what did I do? Like, it's like my lips are dry. And I'm just like, what did I do? Like like what's what's beef you know and I really do need to work on that because I feel like a lot of times too like I always apologize for stuff that like doesn't that I don't need to apologize for or for the simple fact or like people be like what are you talking about and I'll be like well I thought I offended you they're like no bitch like I don't know what I'm talking about but that's why I do those things but that's why I apologize so hard because I've always like I don't know I think it's just more of like a a conscience effort to be like no, like I didn't mean it that way because my intentions are always pure to the point to where I never want I never want to I've never want anybody to go to sleep upset, suicidal, depressed because of what Deshay said, if that makes sense. So that's just why I'm like that. But anyways, back to the story. So you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm there, whatever. And you know, like she kind of showed me. She's like, "Well, today I'm not. I didn't eat. Like I just drank like a whole bunch of water and I did like a Ritz cracker. And so now, like I'm taking melatonin and I'm gonna go to bed. Like that's what I'm doing today. And she's like, "Usually by not be to bed, but I'm showing you. But she's like, "But you know, um, like okay, like she's like, did you eat today? And I'm like, "Yeah. And she's like, "Okay, so just. And I'm like, "Bitch, I just told you I'm not doing it. I just told you. And she's like, "Well." You can either do that, or you do that, or you just be fat. And who wants to be fat? And I'm like, okay. So, I did it. You know, did it, whatever. I'm saying it like I had <laughs> like, like it was on big. But yeah, I did it, or whatever, and didn't like it. But I guess it low-key got addictive, because I would do it a lot. And then I got to a point, too, to where, like, I was like, you know what, like, I got tired of doing it. Because, like, girl, my tonsils was, was worn out after, like, maybe a week. It was, like, it, it was just too much work. So then um, I went to just starving myself. And mind you, like, I was already going through, like, a lot of, like, depressing, like, moments or whatever. So, um, yeah, so I would just, you know, like, not eat, like, whatever, whatever. And I could go, like, up to, like, two weeks without eating, just drinking a whole bunch of water. But, you know, back then, I, I, I'm a child. You're in ninth grade. You're a child. You could, you could probably do that. As an adult, but girl, I can't do that. So I did that for a little bit. And I remember I almost passed out a couple times. But, you know, I was just like, you know, let me just eat a little bit. But that's basically how, like, my eating disorder, like, came to, like, fruition. And then, like, I did that probably for a couple years. And then I realized that, um, even with me having an eating disorder and starving myself or being bulimic or just doing all those things, I realized people were still rude to me. And I was like the thinnest. <laughs> I wonder if I have a picture. I really should post it on my Instagram, but like I was like really like thin. Like you could like y'all see me right here, y'all see that? You can't see not one bone, right? back then all this was like like i was little like little like little like you could fold me up and throw me away i was so little and um then people would start saying oh like you know like you look sick all right and i thought i'm like all right like that's how i'm supposed to look the fuck like i look good so did that for about a couple of years or whatever and then um stopped because I got I got tired of trying to be something that I wasn't I think and I think that um, 
I've realized that no matter like if I was big, if I was small, if I was medium, like no matter what, like people were just gonna like, gonna hate on me because I was me. And I realized that um, basically that was that's what I realized. Like I realized like not really like oh everyone's out to get me, but no like low key like I felt like everyone was out to get me anyway. So it was like okay like you know when I was fat like you would call me fat all the time or you um, ridicule me or you would say this or you would say that. And then when I got skinny it'd be like oh we liked you bigger or we liked you fuller. And just, you know I still kind of struggle. Not struggle with, like, a eating disorder or anything. Like, well, my relationship with food is weird. Like, it's just weird sometimes. Like, sometimes I'm eating and I'm like, should I be eating? And I'm like, yeah, bitch, you should. Or, um, yeah, just little things like that. Or, like, looking in the mirror a lot of times, it's hard for me to look in the mirror because I feel like I look like I'm 600 pounds. And um, it's hard for me to, like, really, like, see myself for, like, what I am and who I am. And I feel like when it comes to clothes as well, like, I would wear, I wear, like, an extra, y'all, I will wear an extra large, an X, 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 XL, because I'm trying to hide, like, because I be feeling like I'm so big. And, like, maybe, like, Memorial Day weekend, like, I put some jeans on, and, like, my cousin was like, oh, like, you know, we should all wear two tops, like, the real, like, kind of shows your stomach a little bit and it's like really tight and I was like no like I'm too big I'm just gonna wear a t-shirt she's like no no like wear a two top because she's younger than me she's like oh wear girl no wear it's memorial day like let's look, let's look fly together like let's wear a two top whatever with our jeans we're gonna look cute and I was just like all right like you know that's my baby cousin I love my kids and so I put it on and I didn't want to look in the mirror because I was just so like um I was so scared of looking like feeling like that I look like I'm 600 pounds like I was like oh my god like you know who wants to like who wants to see someone like me like walking down the street with a two top you know what I mean so put the two top on y'all put the little jeans on then my makeup and I was like you know what like I don't want to look in the mirror because I'm gonna change my mind and then when I went to go see my cousins and I went to the store with them and this lady she's like oh my god like you have a nice body and I thought she was talking to my cousin because I'm just like oh like I'm not used to liking compliments I just be like what and um I looked up and she was talking to me and she's 